In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at file handling. So we're going to be looking at how to open and close files and how to read data from them. The file that we're going to be messing around with is called message.txt. And if I just open this up, it's just literally a three line text file that just contains some simple text. And here's our program. We just start off there with clearing the screen. That's always a good idea in QBasic just to start off with. Um, and I've used this little technique here. Um, I've set up a string variable called file lock dollar. It doesn't really matter what you call the variable, but it's basically it's a little box which we're going to put the file path into. Now, all my files are stored in, on the F drive in the EP code breaking folder. So if I put that in a little, as a little uh, variable at the beginning of my program, I can use it elsewhere in the program. And uh, if, if I move the files around or I move to a different computer, I can easily change that one line of code. And then it, all those changes will carry on wherever I use the word file lock later in the program. So firstly, I use the open command, uh, open. And then what I'm doing is a little technique technique here called concatenating strings so it's going to take the file location so that's the folder name that we put in here and the plus when we're working with strings adds text it just um, pastes that bit of text onto the end so this is like saying f colon backslash ep code breaking backslash message dot text so that's the file location and the file name and we're going to be inputting from this file so we're going to get data from the file read data from the file now we have to call this um, we have to give it a number and we're going to call it number one this is going to be our number one file stream and if we had two or three files we could call them file two and file three and so on i think you get the message there um, and i've just set up another string variable here called in text and that's where i'm going to take one line at a time from the file and uh, put it into the variable called in text and then I can print it out or manipulate it or do various bits and pieces, analyze that text as you'll need to do in your program. Finally, I'm going to close the file. So it's always a good idea to close files when you finish with them to make sure that anything that needs to be written to them can be written. Um, and it's just an efficient way of coding your, uh, your programs. So let's run the program. And when I run it, this is what happens. It just says this is line one of the file. Press any key to continue. We'll close that uh, uh, window down. So let's see what happened there then. It opened the file. It found the file. It put the first line of text, this input hash one here, takes the, uh, the line of the file, the first uh, line from the file, puts it into the variable called in text, and then prints that out on screen. So if I just um, create another couple of lines here, basically copying that again. So we input the first line of the text and then print it. And then we're going to get the next line of text and we're going to print it. So let's run that and see what happens. Here it is. We've got line one of the file, line two of the file. And obviously, there we go. If I paste that in again, I'm now reading all three lines. So let's um, press run, see what happens. Here we go. Line one, line two, line three of the file. Well, that's quite easy, isn't it? Really, it's easy enough to read from files. But look, what happens if I go back to the folder here and I delete the message? Um, there we go. It's now gone. There isn't a message file anymore. So if I just move that out of the way. Now, when I run the program, um, Oh, something bad's happened here. It's saying uh, unhandled error number 53 line 6 file not found continue. Yes Now it's giving me another error here and it's getting oh dear It's all getting very upset and confused because it doesn't know what's happening in the rest of the program um, So if I hit enter and continue so what I'd like to do next is a little bit of error handling in here Just to make sure that before we try and read anything from the file. Let's just check that there actually is a file there Right, so this chunk of code here is the code that I just put in at the top of my program. So again, we've set up our file location. Um, and instead of doing the opening like we did last time for input as file stream number one, we do open file lock plus message text for binary, okay, as hash one. Then we say if LOF brackets one equals zero, in other words, if we can't find our um, line of file so if there's no file there it didn't work then we're just going to close that file stream down print a little message to the user saying that we can't find that message uh, that message.txt in the current directory and then 
you know, between you and me, I, I shouldn't really be using the go to. Um, it's a little bit naughty, but in this particular case here, it's actually quite a good way of doing things. As soon as we hit this, un, you know, if, if we haven't got the file, we can't actually carry on. So we're just going to go to the end of the program. Now, you'll have noticed that that line was red on my um, uh, listing here. And that's because I don't actually have a line in my program called end of program. So I've scrolled down to the end of the program down here. So right down at the end of the program, I'm just going to type end of prog with a little colon afterwards. And that's a special named line of the program right at the end of the program. That's where it's going to jump to if we can't find our file here. So let's just run that, F5. And here we go. I cannot find the message.txt in the current directory. Any key continue, it just jumps out of the program. We don't get all those horrible little error messages all over the place. So that's a really neat, nice way of, of uh, doing some file handling. OK, so now I've uh, written another message text file. I've now got four lines in the file. Um, just want to take a look at this next bit here. Now, this, this bit, when we're reading the, the uh, data from the file, um, it's all well and good if you know how many lines there are. But I've now got four lines in there. And this program was written for there being three lines. Um, yeah, no, not that sort of three lines. Um, but I'm going to rewrite this in a way which will handle any number of lines in the uh, file. So we've set up a loop, a while when to loop. And uh, so what it's saying is while not EOF brackets one. So while we're not hitting the end of the file, there's a special little marker that goes into the end of a, a file in a text file. So while we don't hit that, we're going to bring in from file stream number one, the next line of text, store it in the variable called in text, and then we're going to print in text. And when is just a little instruction that takes us back to the top of the loop. And it's going to go round and round and round here until we hit the end of the file. So let's run that program. And we can see in the window here, this is line one of the file. This is line two, line three, line four. And um, if we close that down, let's bring in the message. Let's add another line. Uh, this is the fifth line and uh, save that, and close it down. Um, when I run the file now, when I run the program now, can you see that? We're seeing, oops, seeing the fifth line of that again. Um, so it's a nice efficient way of looking at all the different lines in a file.